y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Nina, and fitness plus a busy schedule can often equal naw. But if we want it, we gotta make time for it. Now, during my 108 pound weight loss, I had to not only make sacrifices, but decisions that made the most sense during my personal journey. Now, I lost the weight almost 15 years ago and I've kept it off. And I've seen some of your comments that say that maybe it only worked because I was super young at the time. But let me be clear, anytime you're losing that kind of weight and keeping it off, it takes planning, dedication, effort, and you have to start. Now, I'm not unrealistic. I do realize that there are some issues that could prevent us from getting to our ultimate goal at times, but I suggest that we stay focused and motivated instead of putting it off or giving ourselves excuses not to reach our goals. Some of the things that could affect us in the game include your starting weight, gender, age, your diet and nutrition, your sleep habits and how much you're getting, any medical conditions, and your genetics. Now, sometimes we just trying to do too dang on much in order to reach goals that aren't meant for us. We need to make sure that the decisions that we're making right now make sense for what we want and how we're gonna reach our goals. Today, I'm gonna to give you my top five fitness tips that really helped me to level up across my time management, my exercise, and my nutrition. Now, I know many of you all have been on this long fitness journey with me and have been keeping it together, so please chime in below and give us some of the things that have been working for you. All items that I mentioned can be found down below in that good old information section. Now, let's get into this. And y'all, don't forget to thumbs up this video if you like it, comment, share, and subscribe. And also click on those notification bells so you can know when I upload on Thursdays and Sundays. Make sure you also check out my Now That's Life podcast, which is now live. And you can check it out on all your major podcasting platforms. Links to my podcast can be found down below in the information section. Now, while we're getting started, I always show you guys that I love to get natural herbs, vitamins, and nutrients in early in my day. Being an intermittent faster, it's important so that I have energy to do all the busy stuff I got to do. And I've always shown you guys the Team B products. I love their skincare products. I love their detoxes. I love their cleanses. All of their wonderful items that they have that make it simple to do that. And I'm happy to say that they've partnered with me to bring you guys today's video. Now, what I also love is that they have accessories and things like that, like their tea tumbler that makes it easy for me to get my teas in, my nutrients and my herbs, all of that in while I'm on the go. It even has a cute little secret compartment on the bottom where you can keep things that you need to, like jewelry or things that you have on the go, like your teas or anything else that you want to keep there that's small. The tea easily goes inside the bottle and there's even a strainer in there. I literally allow any of the teas that I use by them to sit in for a little while, steep so that I get all the benefits from the tea. But my favorite by them is the skinny. It helps to boost the metabolism. It can help to naturally suppress any cravings. It helps to give energy and it also can serve as a coffee replacement. And I also drink that one every morning whenever I'm detoxing. I like the fact that I don't get the crash that I can get when I drink coffee because I do love coffee sometimes, but I love this one for easing into my day and getting that energy naturally. The ingredients in that one include the oolong and ginger root. Their colon tea is great because it helps to reduce bloating, gets rid of the toxins from the body, and it even helps with improving the skin complexion. I also love that they make it easy by throwing in the calendar. So if you're gonna do a 30-day detox, you know what items to use and when on your 30-day cleanse. Now check out their website down in the information section at teamyblends.com and use my code DN20 for 20% off your order today. Now one thing that's super important in this journey is to make sure you set a goal and determine why you want to lose weight. Furthermore, determine if you even need to lose weight who and what you're doing it for. And you also wanna make sure that that goal is realistic because the more realistic it is and the more gains that you make towards it, the more likely you're able to stick with it. It's much more meaningful to you on your journey when you know why you're doing it for you. And I tell you guys this all the time, but when I started trying to lose weight for other people or for an event or for something else, it just never stuck. 
The first time I lost weight was not the time that I lost weight. Let's be real here. Let's be absolutely transparent. It's not until you make that decision and you outline that for yourself and realize why it's important for you and where you're headed, where you're going and what you're doing it for that it actually works. Life can get in the way of your fitness goals, so it's important that you define that so that you'll actually make and carve out the time for it because you want it. And I know that running around, being a parent, being a spouse, or being a girlfriend, a boyfriend, whatever it is that you are, can take a lot of time out of your life. But remember that you need to be at the top of the list of your priorities, especially when it comes to your health, because all of that is done unless <laughs> you get yourself together and you really figure out what's important for you and your body and your needs and your goals. For me, it was as simple as wanting to be able to wear a tank top. All I wanted to do was to be able to show my arms, maybe wear a swimming suit every now and again. It was important for me and my mental health to see myself the way that I envisioned myself. It kept me going and it's been what has been the number one thing <laughs> keeping me going for 15 years. It's redefining why I'm doing it, who I'm doing it for, and why it's important. And you can do the same. Now this next one is absolutely essential. You have to make time for yourself even when other people do not. Creating a healthier lifestyle means putting yourself first even when it doesn't seem possible. It's important to create a plan, sit and actually think about it. Not just say you're gonna lose weight because when you do that, that's just words into the air. You have to sit and really make a plan, define that, and then make some personal time and goals that add to what you say you want to do. Every day I find small little ways that I can in order to work myself into my own life. So let's start with Sunday. On Sundays, I try to do a little bit of meal prep and I make it simple for myself by doing something different or planning for something different that makes it easy for me to grab from throughout the week. Now, I used to do individual meals all the time, but now I try to make things in bulk, those types of things that make me cut down on the excuses or stop me from making bad decisions. My overall goal is to cut down on major sugars, starches, and even carbs. This helps to cut down on my hunger levels. And my body stopped looking for carbs to burn and started to burn the fat. It also lowers the insulin levels in my body, allowing my kidneys to release more sodium so that I get rid of water weight faster as well. And I also keep in mind that I need to choose from whole foods throughout of all of this, not the store whole foods. I'm talking about foods that are whole foods. On Monday, I try to choose an exercise that I can work in at least three times that week so I don't get bored. Now I work out about five to six times per week. So about five to six days per week. And I like to make sure that I'm mixing it up. So at the beginning of the week, I like to think of something I might do. So if I wanna say I'm gonna do a kickboxing class at least three times that week, that at least gets me out of the rut of doing the same thing over that time. It's up to you. But what you're trying to do is keep yourself excited about trying new things and also changing your body along the way. On Tuesdays, I make it a point to wake up earlier than usual because Tuesdays tend to be my busiest day. On that day, it allows me to work out and not have to rush. I sit and have my coffee or my tea early. I even check my email messages and do other things that I need to do or tidy up. I also ensure that my first and second meal for the day are packed and ready to go. On Wednesdays, I make it a point to go on a longer walk with Bella and that makes it easy to burn even more calories during the hump day, right? So I'm getting a little bit more bang for my buck on Wednesday. And even if I take a walk by myself, I just try to do something on top of what I've already done that morning. On Thursday, I like to look and evaluate what I've done on my to-do list and make sure that I'm accomplishing what I should or that I'm on target for my week. If I need to rearrange, I do. And that's with anything, y'all. This is with your health and your fitness because as long as you're working in everything else, you'll make less excuses about the health and fitness. On Friday, I try to clean my area and make sure that my area is much more clear so that I go into the weekend with a clear mind and I can get a little bit more rest. And if I do that, then I run into less problems trying to find things to do outside of attaining my fitness goals. So my house is clean, everything else is clean, and I can get my mind back on track with what I need to do. And on Saturday, I plan something really nice for myself and something that's out of the way self-care. When I say out of the way, I literally have to make sure that I make time for it. That can be long meditation, 
a facial that I either pay for or do myself, giving my hair some extra attention, doing a skincare overhaul, reading a good book, cooking a new dish or trying something new, checking in with my loved ones, and going to a new spot if I want to. All of these things add to enriching your week and also giving you more to choose from and helping you stick to your fitness and your overall health goals. Now, one of the main things I had to do was realize that portion control and not necessarily calorie counting were gonna be quite important on my journey. Not only that, I had to realize that the biggest issue was what I was eating. Yes, I exercise a lot. However, what you eat can be your worst enemy. It can throw off your whole fitness plan. Now with each one of my meals, especially when I was losing weight, it was all about having a good protein source, a low carb vegetable and fats or good fats. And y'all know I believe in intermittent fasting. I use the 16-8 protocol. I have a video under to help you understand what these protocols are about, but I fast for about 16 hours in my day. Most of that I'm sleeping. And I also have an eight hour eating window. I can usually fit in three to four meals during that time. My goal is to keep my carbs lower and I rotate between 50 to 75 grams of carbs per day. Now, when I talk proteins, I'm talking proteins like meat. So some of you all eat meat. That might be beef, chicken, pork, or lamb. Anything that's going to be lean in its presentation. One of mine that I would have every now and again is fish and seafood. That includes salmon, trout, shrimp, all of that. If you eat eggs, eggs with the whole yolk as well are what are presented as best. And if you're a non-meat eater, there's still ways to get that protein in. Almonds, walnuts, sunflower seeds, tofu, chicken, tempa or tempeh, chickpeas, and lentils. And high protein diets are also known to reduce cravings. They also cut your midnight snacking by half. And they also cut down on you even feeling the urge to be super hungry. And y'all always see me with my low carb vegetables. But some of my favorites include broccoli, zucchini, asparagus, cabbage, spinach, tomato, kale, Brussels sprouts, and cucumber. You can eat a lot of these without getting too many carb counts. And for my fats, I usually go with fats that I cook with. Avocado oil, olive oil, and even coconut oil. I linked below a low carb meal plan for you guys and also like 100 meals that are low carb as well. Y'all also learn to work out first thing in the morning. Now I know y'all know that I have a lot of energy and all of that, but when I'm done, I'm done. After I work out, I even take elevators. I don't take stairs <laughs> because I give my all to my workout. Now I do find other ways to get some calorie burning in the day, but I find that my workouts do better in the morning because I have more energy. And even if you can't get a full workout in in the morning, just moving your body just a little bit cranks up your day, burns a few calories, and also gets your body started, which can boost the metabolism. And it gives you less excuses during the rest of your day. Sometimes the way that you start your day is the way your day is going to go. I find that when I do exercise, I feel better throughout my day. When I don't, I feel like crap most of the time. And yes, I do cardio often and I usually do it five to six days a week. And at least three to four of those days, I overlap it with some weightlifting. When you lift weights, you actually burn more calories. Also, as you're losing weight, it helps you to look more toned and more fit and also tighter looking. And if lifting weights is not an option for you, then always you can stick to lighter ways of cardio or even just using your body weight to help you get some resistance. I really love doing things like also running, cycling, jogging. I like to do things to get my, you know, heart rate pumping, but also tone me up real nicely. Now, we always talk about drinking water, but it's all about how you're drinking the water. One study showed that drinking water about a half an hour before you eat can help to increase your weight loss by 44%. 44% just by drinking a bit of water before because you feel less hungry. A lot of research also says that you should drink about a half an ounce of water per pound. So a 180 pound person would drink about 90 ounces in a day. I choose to drink about a gallon a day. That's just something that I do because I sweat a lot and I work out a lot. Because your muscles are comprised of about 70% of water, you don't want to dehydrate yourself. So it's important to get that water intake. During your exercise, drink about a cup of water per 15 minutes of exercise. You'll start to see some benefits and I'll tell y'all, drinking water has really changed my life. 
because I was that thirsty. So I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video and some of the tips that I offer today. I know that it can be hard to get started on this journey, but all of us have the power, right? Just simple, easy, everyday fixes that we can use to manage our time even better and also our diet and nutrition and everything else that we need to level up. Now, make sure that you comment, share this video with someone who can use it, and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Beautiful brown baby doll. Peace. Special thanks to Jason Bowie of Trinity Media Solutions for co-producing and filming today's video. His information can be found down below in the information section. Thanks so much for all the love and support over on my new website. If you haven't already, go ahead and check it out and join me for new ways to interact with me, giveaways and prizes, weekly emails, as well as my free eight day supernatural video course, which is free when you sign up.